I'll go through a few of the things I've done, and these are some a visual task redesign, motor skill redesigns, a few of them, um, a concept redesign, and then a whole bunch of others that I've thrown in there, and a couple I've forgotten that I brought anyway with me today. And I'll start with the cell, with the visual task redesign and the cell models. So um, when I thought about what I was doing in my class that might not be inclusive, um, I happened to also have at the time a legally blind student in my class. Uh, she could see a bit, but uh, legally blind. So she couldn't see in the microscope, and I knew that. So the issue was that students use microscopes to view cells, and anyone who has a visual impairment can't benefit from this work. But in addition, you know, from the microscope work, but in addition, you know, when we're done with the lab, and we're cleaning up, and everyone's leaving, and they get their books together, and they're walking out, they all start talking to each other, and you hear them say things. And I've heard them as they leave my lab saying, now this is after I spent two hours working with them, saying, I don't know what I just saw. Do you know what you just saw? No, I know an idea what I just saw. So. You feel like, okay, there's something missing. And it's not just my students who can't see in the microscope, okay? It's, it's everybody. So in trying to think about what were my goals for all this microscope work, I came up with just a couple of general goals. So like, why do we look at all these cells in the microscope? And <clears throat> one idea is that each, we look at a different at varieties of cells, cell types. And each type of cell can be distinguished based on what type it is and the visible components within it. And that if you can see these certain components, you can recognize them and relate whatever components are there to what the cell does. Using a microscope as a tool, as a tool is something that is new to them. Whenever you have a new tool, it takes time to get used to it. So I try to um, think about how can we do this with um, without necessarily just having the microscope. What alternative presentation can I give? This is a picture of a, sm a small portion of a field of cells from a green plant called Elodea. And if you were the student, and this is just a visual slide, would you know what to draw? Would you know what a cell was? Mm -hmm. What thing are you supposed to be looking at? So we often get students who, instead of drawing one cell, they'll draw the whole field. It's a circular field, so they figure the circle of everything they can see is the cell. Or they'll find one tiny little dot in here. That's the cell. That must be the cell. So they don't know what a cell is. And they have no idea what to draw, which even if they're not an artist, that doesn't matter how well they draw it. It's just that they figured out what a cell is. They can't do that. They, they don't know what they look at. And they walk out of the room going, I don't know what I saw. Everything looked the same to me. What I came up with were some cell models. Now, I'll start with my final one. These are the new ones that I just finished. If you take one of the membranes, okay, and you say to a student, this is the membrane for the cell, and I want you to, I want you to act like the cytoskeleton. I have to throw that in for the biology teachers. But I want you to shape this into the shape of that cell that, that you're seeing. Now they have to figure out what shape they turn it into. This is my cell shape. Someone else will say, my cell doesn't look like that. And they look in each other's scopes until they figure out, by doing that, they'll know what a cell is. Now, someone with a visual impairment who can't look in the scopes, if I put it down, mm -hmm. they can at least feel what the shape is for that cell. And then you can shape it into another cell. So because it's a plant cell, although it's hard to see in this picture, so now you can take the cell wall and put this on the cell. Now, one of the problems that all students tend to have is which is the cell wall and which is the cell membrane. And when you arrange these, they only fit one way, and that is with the cell wall on the outside. The cell wall won't fit on the inside. And you can take these green things and start to stick them in. And they don't even necessarily know what they are, but they know that if they're only given certain things, that the green things go here, right? Now they can start laying in all these green things, and they'll put them wherever they would be in the cell. 
And what's really fun about this cell is that the green things move. So they're not in one spot for very long. But they'll, so they'll put it in, and if they start moving, they have to keep, they have to move them around. So next thing you know, they're, they're quickly trying to move them. Like, and now there's all this other stuff happening in the cells. And with the students and with the groups. So, you know, anyone who can't see can still see what they're seeing by feeling this stuff. And so I've added a lot of tactile components to this. Um, and I've also added some other concepts too. So, for example, you can take two halves and put them together. Mm -hmm. So they realize that they're only looking at a half or when it's open, but they can see what the hole would be like moving around, or they can feel the hole. So there's a lot of other things you can do with it. But when students are doing it with the cell models, they actually can draw the cell that they're seeing. They know what to draw now. If nothing else, they can draw what's on the table. Now, when I do testing, when I assess, so in lab, for a lab practical, I stick some models on the lab practical. And I say, what kind of cell is this? What does it do? Oh, this makes sugar, right? Because it's got chloroplasts in it. But kind of step through, and I make sure I assess them the way that they're learning as well. So I give them both. So, and you can, on this uh, purple onion cell, you can see how thick the cell walls are in this picture, how there's all this space between the two. And there's some things they're limited with, and the models are limited, and then they start to ask questions. They'll say, well, this is a thicker cell wall. How do we show that with this? You can't. But just because they ask the question means they're seeing it. So they suddenly start to express themselves more. They have the models, so now they, t they say out loud the word chloroplast. They say out loud the word cell membrane, and they say it differently, separately from cell wall, which normally they put the two together. They'll start to talk about it. They'll be using the words that you want them to learn. So any kind of manipulative can be very handy. What I've tried to do is come up with some general, quick, how is this universal? But there's a lot of things that are universal about something like this. Um, so for each of my redesigns, I've tried to give a little slide on how is it like a universal design. In this case, all students will see the small subset of visible components that make up a cell. You know, you just lay out all the components on a cart or whatever. They all know what to draw now. So they have some idea. And they'll look in each other's scopes to verify that that cell that they see on the table in the models is the one that they're drawing from the, it's the one in the microscope. Um, if you're a tactile learner, an interactive learner, a kinesthetic learner, you can learn better. Um, you also, there's something to be said about modeling the actual cell that you see and not modeling some typical generalized cell. Textbooks always have pictures of a generalized an, or model animal cell or model plant cell, and nothing looks like that. They start to make critical evaluations, like, my cell doesn't look like that, or the cell wall is thicker, or um, wait, how come the cell, mem the cell membrane is yellow and some of the other organelles, why are they yellow? And they start to talk about, oh, because it's made up of lipid. I knew that students who had visual disabilities couldn't see in the microscope, I mean, that's a given. But in order to do the cell models, what I had to do is reevaluate my goals. 